good to be in the Lord's house. Yes, it is. Amen. And I'm thankful for each and every one of you that are here today to worship the Lord. Amen. Amen. God is so good to us. He is worthy. Oh, God is so good. Amen. 2 Chronicles chapter 20 and verse 15. And he said, Hearken ye, all Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou, King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid, nor dismayed, by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, yes. Amen. Amen. but God's. Amen. And that's the part I want to focus in on right there. Aren't you glad that Jesus is the same Amen. yesterday and today? Amen. Yes. The battle is not yours. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord Jesus, we're so thankful. We are thankful, Lord, to be in your house. Thankful for your presence. Thankful, Lord, for your spirit. Thank you, Lord, for all the great things you're doing in our lives. We lift up your name, Jesus. We praise you. We glorify you, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to take complete control. Speak to each and every heart that your perfect will be done. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, take complete control. Amen. You can be seated. Amen. The battle is not yours, but God's. Yes. The battle belongs to God. It's His. In verse number 2 of that chapter, it says, Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side, Syria. In verse number 3, it says, And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord. Oh, we could learn something from that, huh? Yes, sir. Amen. Whatever we face, difficulties, challenges, things that seem beyond us to handle, we need to set ourselves to seek the Lord the Lord. Amen. He proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. Oh, God is saying to us today that the battle is not yours. I don't know what you're facing today. It may seem like it's big. It may seem like it's more than you can handle. It may seem like this tremendous challenge. But I know this. God has not changed. Amen. God is in control. Yes. The battle belongs to God. And He's saying, take your hands off of the controls right. and learn to trust Me. Take right. your hand off of the controls and stop worrying so much about the things that are happening to you in your life. But learn to put your trust in God. Good. Oh, it takes time to learn to lean on God. You have to lean on Him and believe that He sees everything that you're going through every day. It's time to put your hands in the air and say, God, I've come to the end of my rope. I don't know what to do in this situation. This is bigger than I am, God. I don't know what to do, but I know, God, that you are able. I have a God, and my God is able to take care of any situation. And so they gathered together and they began to pray. Now, moves of the Spirit, you don't see a whole lot of them in the Old Testament. But you do here. It says, The Spirit of the Lord came upon one of the Levites in the midst of the congregation. That's in verse number 14. And he said, Hearken ye all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem and thou King Jehoshaphat, Thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid. Doesn't that sound good? Yes, it does. Be not afraid, nor dismayed, by reason of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but God. He is saying, I see what you're going through. God is saying to you, I understand 
what you are facing. I understand the seriousness of the situation. I understand that in your heart you feel the fear rising up within you. I understand all that. But you know what? You don't have to be afraid. Good, good. I have it. Hey, I got this. That's what he's saying. If you want to put it in modern day terminology, he's saying, I got this. Tomorrow, go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Zig, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jerul. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves. Stand ye still. And see the salvation of the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Oh, but there's one thing that I want you to do. I want you to appoint some singers. And I want you to begin to praise the beauty of holiness. I want you to begin to praise the Lord for His mercy endures forever. Amen. And when they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. Oh, do not look at the odds that are stacked against you. Right. Do not focus your attention upon the difficult challenges that lie before you. Do not allow the enemy to lie to you. Right. Amen. God is able. Yes. Trust yes. in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge Him. What does it mean to trust? The Hebrew word is beta, and it means refuge, to be confident, to be sure, to be bold. We trust in things that can't always take care of us. We trust in things that let us down. In Deuteronomy 28 and 52 it says, And he shall besiege thee and all thy gates, until thy high and fenced walls come down, wherein thou trusted. Oh, I don't want to trust in things. I want to trust in God. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. How about Noah? I want you to make an ark of gopher wood. Oh, there's a flood that's coming, and the end of all flesh is before me, and I'm going to destroy man whom I have created. But if you make this ark, according to the fashion that I'm about to tell you, you and your family will be saved. And the Bible tells us that Noah moved with fear and prepared an ark right. to the saving of his yeah. house. And God is saying to you today, even if you don't understand it, I just want you to trust me. Just believe that I am able, that I am watching out for you, that I see your struggles, that I know what you're going through. I know exactly where you're at. Don't believe the lie of the devil when he tells you that you're all alone. Yes. 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 He said to Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house into a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee and make thy name great. Yes. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we just have to grab onto the promises of God Amen. and embrace those promises. Yes. We need to pull those promises in close to us. It says, by faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. Right. And he went out not knowing whither he went. But he was looking for a city which hath foundations, uh, whose builder and maker is God. Yes. Oh, I think that city's just over in the glory land. I'm looking for a city, folks. I'm looking for right. a day when I'm going to stand on streets yes. of gold and I'm going to raise my hands and I'm going to worship my God. But you know what? You have to trust Him today. You just have to hang on to His promises. You have to believe that God is able. You have to believe that He is. You have to believe that He is a rewarder. You have to believe yes. that God will never fail you. It's yes. time to stand up and say, He's never
fight this thing myself right. and carry weights uh, that I was never meant to carry. Right. Oh, the burden is too great at times. Uh, it's time to cast your cares upon him. Oh. It's time to put it in God's hands today. Yes, Lord. Yes. How about Hezekiah? It says in 1 Kings 18 and 1 that Hezekiah began to reign in Judah. He was 25 years old. Listen to this. He removed the high places and break the images and cut down the groves and break in pieces the brazen serpent that Moses had made for unto those days did the children of Israel burn incense to it. And he called it Nahushtan. And he trusted, I like this, and he trusted in the Lord God of Israel yes. so that after him was none like him among the kings of Judah right. nor any that were before him. That is what he was known for. Yes. He trusted in the Lord with all his heart. Yes. Oh, you're never going to convince me otherwise. I know that my God is good. Yes.
or at the height of his stature. Come on. The Lord looks at the heart. Right. Yes. Literally, God said, a man looks at the face. A man looks at the outer appearance. And to look at Goliath, he was intimidating. Oh, you see, Goliath may have been a giant. But no matter how big he was, my God is big. Yes. Right, right, right. Yes. Greater is he that is in me. Yes. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Yes. And no matter how much power the giant might have had, my God is all power. Yes, he is. Oh, my God is bigger. He's bigger than all of my worries. He's bigger than all of my fears. Yes, amen. He's bigger than all of my doubts. Be not dismayed. Do not be afraid. The battle is not yours. Oh, but maybe you feel like today you're facing a giant. A champion giant. Out of the camp of the Philistines there came a champ or at the camp of the Philistines there came a champion named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. He had a helmet of brass upon his head and he was armed with a coat of mail. When you look at that, you realize he was over nine feet tall. They had armor that they would wear underneath their outer armor, the coat of mail. His armor weighed 200 pounds. Yeah. Just his vest weighed 200 pounds. The head of his spear weighed 25 pounds, just the tip of his spear. It was like a weaver's beam. So he was waving it around. I've never figured out what that is. <laughs> but it sounds big. Yes. He's waving this spear around that looks like a weaver's beam. He had a helmet of brass. He had greaves of brass that went up and covered his legs to protect him. He was fully armored as he approached towards David. It says in verse number 16 of 1 Samuel 17, The Philistine drew near morning and evening and presented himself 40 days. Ye men of Israel, why are you drawn up in array against the Philistines, you servants of Saul? Notice they're not servants of the Most High God. Right. You servants of Saul over there, choose a man for yourself and let him come down here and fight me. Morning and evening he presented himself 40 days. And isn't that the way fear, worry, pressure, stress come in our lives? It's not just a one-time thing. Morning and evening. Every day. You come home from work and there's the stress. There's the worry. You wake up the next morning, there's the stress. There's the worry. There's the pressure. There's the knots in your stomach. says in 1 Samuel 17 and 23, so David walks up to the camp and he's looking around to see what's going on. It says, and he talked with them, and as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the army of the Philistines, and spake according to the same words. And David heard them. And this right here is one of the saddest verses in the Bible. 1 Samuel 17 and 24. And all the men of Israel... When they saw the man, fled from him and were sore afraid. Woo! All the men of Israel fled. Where are the mighty men? Mm -hmm. yes, Come on, husbands and fathers. Come on. Where are the mighty men who will stand up to the giant? Come on. Yes. Where are the mighty men who will stand up for God? Yes. Where are the mighty men who will stand up and be a role model? Who will stand up and be counted? Who will stand up for the things that are right? Who will stand up and say, I believe God is in control? Who will stand up and say, after me and my house, we will serve the Lord? Where are the mighty men? Oh, God is looking for someone. 
one who will stand up to the giants of today. picture David looking at that giant and he said you know what I don't even see that giant come on right there is only one giant here today that's it good good oh there's only one giant and he is on my side oh who is this uncircumcised Philistine who thinks he can speak against the living God. The God who created the heavens and earth. The God who has all power. The God who is empowering me. This is not my battle. This is the Lord's battle. I'm going to step out there today in faith. And I'm going to believe that my God is going to fight for me against this giant. And when he's on my side, I can't. When I am weak, then I am strong. Oh, if you could ever learn that you don't have to be eloquent or strong or handsome or beautiful or brilliant. All you have to be is yielded to your God. All you have to do is say, Lord, let me be a vessel through which you can flow. Yes. Giants intimidate us. Our first impulse is to freeze. Our thoughts get confused. We forget how to pray. We focus on the odds against us. But I want you to notice what David said. Verse number 45 of 1 Samuel 17. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. Verse number 47, listen to this. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's. Yes. Oh, let that sink in. The battle is the Lord's. Are you trying to fight your own battles? Are you trying to do it your own way? Are you saying, I'm having trouble trying to outsmart my enemy. I can't seem to defeat him. You can't, but God can. Yes. 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 Oh, God is saying, turn it over to me. All right. Turn it over to me. And I like what David went on to say later in Psalms 31. In verse number 14, he said, But I trusted in Thee, O Lord. I said, Thou art my God. My times are in Thy hand. Deliver me from the hand of mine enemies. All David had was a sling and a stone against a giant wearing more than 200 pounds of armor. But God was telling him, just put it in my hands and trust me. 
Yeah. Oh, lean not into your own understanding. Just trust me. And I believe as David walked down towards that giant, he walked down into that valley. In fact, in one place it says he ran to him. I believe this was the cry of his heart. I will give you all. If all is what you ask of me, I would not withhold. Oh, are you ready to give it all to the Lord today? Are you ready to give Him your heart, your soul, your desires? Are you ready to love the Lord your God with all your heart? Are you ready to say, I'm tired of fighting this myself? I'm ready to turn it over to you, Lord. I'm ready to put my life completely in your hands and say, I trust you. The battle is not yours. The things you're facing, God can handle it. It's time. Let's stand to our feet. Lift up your hands and begin to say, yes, Lord.